Because there's going to be times I've told you that in this life you will have trouble. For those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. Because Jesus is the king of the kingdom. Amen. He was never a religious figure. He clashed with the religious figure of his day. You know why my wife and I had no problem walking away from our entire lives in Wisconsin? Because I knew that I was sent on a mission. Listen, I want to talk to you this morning about being a carrier of the kingdom. Being a carrier of the kingdom. Being reinstated as one of God's rulers. Because we, we, we've, walked in, uh, we've walked in just having or playing church for, for too long or so long. And so our minds have to be reconditioned or made new that this is really the purpose and the reason why we were created. To display the power of God's kingdom in the earth. Not in, not in a building, but in the earth. And when Paul wrote to the church at Rome in, in the 8th chapter, that text I just read, he said, all of creation is eagerly awaiting or anticipating the manifestation of God's sons and daughters to be revealed. This is what they're waiting on, to show, to, to show that, that there is a difference between Christianity and Islam. To show that there's a difference between uh, you know, Christianity and, 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 and Buddhism. To show that there's a difference between uh, Christianity and Jehovah Witnesses and what they believe. Or the Mormons and what they believe. Because we serve a God that is not dead, but he's alive. Amen. And he's full of power. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that power that was entrusted to Jesus has also been entrusted and given to his church. Because he is our head and we are his body. And so the same power that Father God gave to Christ, he's also given to us. You already have it. It's already in you. Listen, I preached at a conference last week, a Shout of Judah conference, and the message that the Lord gave me for that conference was a message called Transformative Power. Transformative Power, the church triumphant. Because we have a tendency as humans to always look at what we see. To look at, okay, the church, look at all of the faults and all of the, the, the issues and, and all of the, the spots and the wrinkles that Jesus said he was coming back for a church without those. We have a tendency to always look at that and to focus in on that. And the Lord had to help me even before I preached that message because it's the easiest thing to do to always pick out or point out what's wrong. But the Lord reminded me of his prophetic promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia of God. And that regardless of what kind of issues that we have, because we're a family, we're people. So we're going to have issues. Because we're not perfect. Amen? But the Lord began to remind me that my church is a church that's triumphant. And the only way that things are going to get done in the earth is through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the only way. No politician can save you. No, no uh, tax bailout can save you. I don't care who you vote in the office, they can't save you. The, the, the vehicle that God has placed in the earth to get the job done, to make the difference, is the church of the Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. So listen, this message that I shared last week, transformative power. The word transformative is defined as having power, already having power. Not going to have it, or you already have it. Having power or a tendency or an inclination or the potential to transform. Hallelujah. Already having power. It means to change in form, appearance, or structure. To change in condition, nature, or character. Transformative power. You ever heard people say, the church ain't got no power. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Let me show you. Turn, your, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Acts. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. 
chapter 1, verse 8. We are the church triumphant. Amen? Hallelujah. Are we all there? The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8 says this. But you shall have power. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So I have a question for you. If the Holy Spirit has already come upon you, please show by raising your hands. And if the writer in Hebrew said that we have a better covenant established and built on better promises so which means we should have more than people from the Old Testament because we live under the dispensation of grace in the new so we don't just have the Holy Spirit to come upon us but now we have the greater one that lives in us so if the Holy Spirit is on you and you raise your hand and in the New Testament he also lives in you if that's true raise your hand then somebody please tell me where the power is. Where is it? It's on the inside. So we don't have to pray and ask God for power. We've got to find out how to unlock, unleash, reveal, or unveil what's already in us. Hallelujah. When his disciples said, Master, teach us how to pray. And he said, in like manner, this is how you shall pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let me explain something to you. You don't have to pray and let your kingdom come anymore. Because the kingdom is already here. It's in you. But if you don't understand that, if you don't have a revelation of that, you'll still pray prayers that have expiration dates on them. Hallelujah. Because the kingdom of God is nigh you. It's in you now. Hallelujah. And the way that this kingdom is demonstrated, the strength and the might of this kingdom is manifested. It's through believers that have tenacious faith, who refuse to be denied who will stand in the face of the impossible and call it possible because Jesus said it so. Hallelujah. And when we step out on a limb like that, you think that the strength of the kingdom is not going to back us up? We're sticking our necks out for this king and his kingdom. And we're ambassadors, the Bible says, of this kingdom. Hallelujah. We're agents of this kingdom. We carry this kingdom. And we're called to exercise and demonstrate to a world that can't see this invisible king and his kingdom. We're called to let them see that. How? Through power, and through love, and through deliverance, and through preaching and teaching and healing. Hallelujah. And when you study Jesus' ministry, you'll see that he preached and demonstrated the kingdom all the time. He said, for seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else that you need will be added unto you. He put great emphasis on this kingdom. Why? Because he knew he had a short window. And that the mandate that this kingdom is called to carry out was going to be thrown upon our shoulders. And guess what? We are well equipped to get the job done. You know that we are well equipped. I don't care what kind of issues you have. We are well able to get this job done. Because it's the Father that does the work in a, uh, anyway, not us. We're just vessels. We're conduits that the power flows through. We're showpieces, amen? But God wants to demonstrate his power and his authority like he did with that woman for all of the world to see. <gasps> Backed by all of the resources and authority, exousia, 
from the government from which it was sent. Woo, Jesus, this is good. <sighs> to conduct all matters of foreign or business affairs. You know why my wife and I had no problem walking away from our entire lives in Wisconsin? Because I knew that I was sent on a mission. And that my God has promised to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Shh. My God. I don't care what it looked like and what it sounded like. I live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Shh. Every word that proceeds out of his mouth, I live by, strive to live my life by. Hallelujah. Because I was sent from, from his kingdom and this government to here, to Cincinnati, for a reason and a purpose. Not just to plant a church and pastor and retire after 30 years, but to change the dynamics and the culture of this city. Yeah. By teaching them the culture and the moral of our kingdom that we represent. Hallelujah. So it didn't matter. It didn't matter, Wayne, that we had to walk away from everything, man. Jobs and income and homes and family members. Because God gave me a promise in his word. Hallelujah. And every promise of God is yes and amen. And he gave me a promise. In Mark 10, 28, 10, 28 through 30. That if anyone forsakes lands and houses, and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers, for my sake and the gospel, say you will reap a hundredfold in this lifetime. Hallelujah.